This episode, we take a look at a, the Exotica expansion for the deck building card game, Eminent Domain. One note before we start, we were provided with a review copy of this expansion from Tasty Minstrel Games. Uh, Eminent Domain Exotica was designed by Seth Jaffe. Uh, this is the original designer of Eminent Domain itself and feature, features art from Eric J. Carter and Ariel Sione. It was published in 2016, so this is definitely not the new hotness tonight. For a good look at what you get with this expansion, be sure to check out our unboxing video on YouTube. All right, as this is an expansion, I think people are going to care what you get in the box. You do get a slew of new stuff for Eminent Domain. We're looking at 31 new technology cards, 27 new planets, four new starting planets, nine scenarios, new fighter tokens, a whole new resource and counters for it, uh, as a nice bonus touch stickers for all of the resources, including the ones in the original game. Now, that's just the stuff for Exotica. What's also in here is a bonus pack of more cards that are only meant to be used if you're playing it with uh, the Escalation expansion for Eminent Domain. And this includes even more technologies, planets, and scenario cards. Like, overall, I was really impressed. This is a small little box. It is packed. There is a lot of nice stuff in here. As for quality, everything matches up with the original. I have no complaints. Nothing really stuck out as awesome, but there was definitely nothing wrong. And one of the scenario rules is even called hipster. So you can enjoy your overpriced latte with your controlling of the galaxy. <laughs> now, the big thing added by this expansion to Eminent Domain are uh, asteroids and the ability to mine them and the new exotic keyword and source type that goes with that. Almost all of the new components here, like pretty much all of them. I, I didn't check to see if every card references them, but as far as I can tell, it's most of the new texts and all of the new planets feature these new gameplay elements. So everything in here is asteroids and mining or exotic. Now I'm going to start off by talking about the asteroids and mining. So asteroids are a new planet type. They're in the planet deck. They're easy to colonize or conquer. Every single one is a 3-3. In addition to having these new things there's a new action included which is um if anyone has exotica it's like having the new warfare action where you can use your ships and this is an action called mining what it lets you do is you can discard your entire hand to flip over an asteroid to colonize it quote unquote that's considered mining now basic mining can also be upgraded but in that's by using a research action you spend three knowledge and you get to flip over the card you have for um Mining, you know, have advanced mining. And what it does is it makes all asteroids cost one less, whether that's colony or ship. Right. And now one thing that I, I did note elsewhere uh, in other discussions of this, mining doesn't let you draw another asteroid card. It just lets you flip over the flip. existing asteroid card. And I, I noticed that was a mistake. I saw huh. it in some other reviews and teaches. So interesting. I wonder how people... I, we definitely didn't make that mistake ourselves. So and if they if they possibly updated the rule book in the printing I have, I don't know. I think it was just was a little confusion. bit of confusion, uh, confusion with how things were when they were yeah. going through it. But no, it lets you flip over the asteroids you have. It basically yeah. lets you colonize them. So colonizing the asteroid, why would you do it? And the thing is, it, it, you don't. There's no immediate good reason to because most aren't that good. They're not worth in points at the end of the game. They're not giving you a lot of resources that just not as good as the planets. So you're like, wow, these don't do anything at all until you start looking through the new technology cards. Cause many of these new technology cards do something based on the number of asteroids you have that are mined. As an example, there's the asteroidal colonies card that gives you one colony symbol for every mined asteroid you have in play. Can you imagine how powerful that is? Like you can take a six planet in one turn if you've got six mined asteroids in play with this. Or the asteroidal warfare card, which gives you one fighter and lets you attack one planet for every mined asteroid you have in play. And that's just two cards out of many. Yeah, and it really does seem that once you understand these new tech cards, hoarding asteroids is a perfectly strong tactical choice to make. Yes, and added to that, there are also technologies that let you get more asteroids. Not by that one technology, but technology cards that actually like let you search the deck and go until you find an asteroid. So that's the asteroid stuff. Next comes the exotic stuff. Now, this is a little more complicated. So there's a few things going on here. So first off, there's a new exotic symbol, which looks like all the other role symbols. And it kind of looks like General Grievous from Star Wars. And I think it's supposed to represent like ancient aliens. Now, there's also a new planet type. By adding a new planet type to the game, they actually threw in a whole new technology deck just for that planet type. Note, this planet type does not work for any of the previous combos, like where you needed two different types of planets. These don't count. You still have to stick to the originals. Now, here's where it gets odd. 
the exotic planets don't actually generate exotic symbols, even though they have them on the top, but they all have an arrow next to them and they're exotic translators is the way it's worded. And what it lets you do is convert your exotic symbols to one of the standard rule symbols. So you might be able to convert your exotic symbols to colonize or explore. The thing is they don't give you any. To get actual exotic symbols, you have to buy some of these new exotic technologies that come on that new tech deck. Plus there's some mixed in the other decks. Once you have some and a planet with a converter, like two or three exotic symbols become really powerful. Like they almost become wild cards in your deck, depending on the number of converters you have. Now, thematically, I thought it was neat because I thought this worked. It represents alien technology that you don't understand. And the more technology cards you have that are exotic, the more you understand and can use the technology. Now, along with some of this, there are also um, technology cards that are like the asteroid cards where you get something for every exotic symbol you have. So it does that similar to the asteroids. Right. And there's, an, as a nice little note, they differed the exotic symbol slightly so that some have a red outline and some don't, which is specifically to help end game scoring where the different card types, even though they may all have exotic cards, some mm -hmm. of them don't actually count towards victory points. Yeah, one of the things they've done to balance the game uh, is some of these exotic cards give you negative victory points based on how many of them you have. So if you focus too much on the alien technology, you actually lose points because it is really powerful. And that's where those red and the yellow symbols come in. Uh, now we also have a new resource. It's called Crystal. And what's nice is they put a nice green see-through pieces. So they're actually, instead of the wood, they look like crystal. I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, these are usually only found on the exotic worlds. These work exactly the same as any other resource. Though they're harder to find, they don't count for cards that say any resource. Now, what this did do is it lets cards that are like, when you trade in, get a bonus point for each resource type you have. So what it did is it, it helped balance the existing buying and selling strategies by giving some added bonus to that, which I actually thought was a welcome change. Yeah, it's interesting because while a lot of what these expansions do is add new directions you can go in, they have also in, in, in various ways with each expansion tweaked original uh, concepts just a little yeah. bit to help make them either more viable or, or less overpowering or whichever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, I would say that escalation fixes warfare as a strategy. It, it definitely makes warfare more viable. This part of this expansion makes trade and buying and selling more viable, makes the, a trade strategy. Now, along with this, there are some minor rule tweaks and additions that I don't really want to get into because they're just like minutia. Like there's resources that replenish every round. There are some new scenario cards. Uh, note you would, the scenario rules were actually included in Escalation. They do rep replete them here. Now, Escalation came with a deck of scenarios. There's like nine new ones in here. It's basically that there are nine new ones that use these new things. Um, there's some diverse technologies that use all three original planet types. Note, again, original, the exotics don't count. Again, this was something that was added in Escalation, but repeated here. Um, basically nothing, just little things, minutia and little details and cards that let you see, search through the deck or put things on the top of decks or whatever. Right. Now, I did mo mention Escalation quite a few times here. You do need to own or use Escalation to use Exotica. It is perfectly viable and valid on its own. Right. And there was a little glitch there, so that's you do not need to own i think in case that uh that glitch comes through on the audio you do not need to own yes. that uh escalation uh replenishing was added in escalation but they keep reintroducing it in the later expansions so that you don't have to understand have have the escalation mm -hmm. uh or or any of the other expansions yep now as for my thoughts on this expansion for eminent domain i like it um what i like the most about these two new features the asteroids and the exotic symptoms is that they're multi-step process. It's not, uh, you get a thing. Like to actually get anything out of them, you have to do a series of actions. For example, you need to get the asteroids, you need to mine them, and then you need to find a technology that will put those mined asteroids to use. Similarly with the exotic worlds, having one does nothing. You, you have a converter for converting nothing. It takes building your deck with a focus on exotic technologies in order to actually cash in on that. And I, there's something about that that just feels sci-fi, like feels 4X, feels like space exploration. I love that multi-step process. It feels good. Yeah, no, indeed. They really open up new paths as opposed to just adding something new to slip into an existing strategy. Then when combined with roles, the replayability and our scenarios, the replayability and potential of this game is really powerful. 
Now, the problem with this, because there's always got to be a problem, right, is the same one I've stated in every eminent domain review we do and every time we talk about actual plays in our weekend review, and that is the learning curve. This expansion tosses in a lot of new elements at once, and it's not modular. Like, you can't just use the mining, and you probably could if you actually went through your deck and picked and choose, but, like, it's, it's designed to use all of it or none of it. And then added to it, the interaction of these elements is not obvious. Like I basically explained how you progress your way through with, you get asteroids, you mine them, you use them. There's nothing in the game that teaches you that. We had to figure it out. Like we had to sit there going, okay, what am I doing with these asteroids? Why, why do I even want these? And then later, once I've got a couple other planets up and I get to get a tech going through the tech gate going, oh, wait, this is asteroid. Oh, wait. And like, there's this discovery, right? And, and that was totally what it was like, like they're not that good. And it wasn't until studying the research and the technology deck that the actual advantages of these new uh, strategies became evident. Right. I, I think a quick strategy guide would actually be a fantastic adder to the game just to give new players an idea about why they would want to use this new thing so they mm -hmm. don't trip over the potential completely by accident. No, I agree. I could see that. Though then you lose that discovery moment that eureka moment of figuring it out yourself. So you, you would take that away from players if you did give them the strategy. Though I, I do spelled think out. Um, they, there is a giant fold out in this with all the tech tree in it. Yes. And if you were to be the kind of player who like to go through and analyze tech trees, mm -hmm. you would figure this out before the game. But that's a lot to expect from most players. Again, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot to ask, right? Because because once you do, once you take the time to learn the new technology cards, whether that's studying the tech tree or um, during play, and, and how everything interacts with each other. There is a lot to like here. It's just getting over that hill, like getting over that hurdle that, that just not everyone's going to want to do that. Though I got to say at this point, this is the second expansion for this game. And unless you bought everything at once, you're probably pretty invested in eminent domain and already have some skill and are used to doing these connections. You're probably inclined to get over that learning curve. Yeah, and I think it's a little less scary if you've already been through it once. So if you picked up Excalation mm -hmm. and you, you've already dealt with that, oh, look, here's a whole bunch of new stuff that's all jammed in there you know it'll be bumpy for the first couple of games and then you'll catch on and yep. you'll enjoy all these new opportunities. Now, having played it a good number of times and playing around with these new elements, I'm pleased to say that these the, the strategies that are evident in this both seem very valid, right? Like as a unique standalone um, games, we've had someone just try to do exotic and do all alien tech. And I've seen a game where someone played just like asteroid heavy, just getting every asteroid they possibly can. And, that that both worked um as well as combining them right like so having a colonized strategy with asteroids on the side or working on exotics while doing a trade strategy which works particularly well with that new element um what we did find was difficult is it didn't seem like you could just do exotic ads because you're looking at two different types of planets you're trying to collect if you do that so that didn't seem totally valid though i think it might work uh what i did like too is a lot is you could ignore it you could if you like here if you have a strategy for playing eminent domain and you like to play a heavy colonization strategy this expansion is not going to ruin that colonization strategy for you now there are going to be new planet types and you might need to find something to mitigate so that you can go through the deck a little quicker but overall we never found that the old strategy stopped working which i really liked now of course this is eminent domain so what works best is not just going to be based on what you want to do. It's going to be what planets come up, what other players are doing, what roles come around, what, especially what roles the other characters pick, because the whole descent or draw thing is if you can get another player to do the work for you, maybe you do want to colonize a lot because, man, Sean's going on a colonize thing. He's going to keep colonizing, so that's going to let me flip more asteroids. I guess I'll ignore my original exotic strategy. That's eminent domain for you. Yeah, again, those those roles, those scenarios based with the combined with the wealth of strategic directions that are available and expanding with every expansion makes this the replayability of this game just huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely the roles. The scenarios are something different. Scenarios are a game setup thing. It's the, the roles you take as you're playing are, are the big push here. Like overall, I got to say, if you play Eminent Domain, get this. There, if you don't have it yet, which is, I, I feel like I'm probably preaching to the choir. I don't know how many people now that it's um, four years after this has come out. But if you've been considering it, I, I would pick this up. Like, I actually prefer this one to Escalation. I felt I got more new options without changing the feel of the game. Because 
Escalation really did put a focus on warfare and collecting ships and trading ships for technology that changed the feel of the game, where it's not. That said, this plays really well with just the base game and just as well with Escalation. So you can go either way. Now, if you're not an eminent domain fan, you probably aren't listening to this right now. But if you are, uh, this doesn't do anything to change the original. So there's nothing here to make eminent domain more appealing to a broader audience. It's, it's not doing anything new that would draw new people in. Right. Well, for a more in-depth look at eminent domain exotica, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews.